Hey folks, so let's get started with Netlify functions in TypeScript. We're going to be building today our Monster as a Service API. So in this video, we're going to create a Netlify tunnel file for configuration of our deploy on Netlify. And we're going to configure our BubbleRC file to tell Bubble how to compile our TypeScript. We're going to make server-side requests to another API. We're going to then return a tailored response to our user. We're going to see this all happening locally before, and then we're going to deploy instantly to Netlify. To follow this tutorial, we already need to have a Netlify account and a basic understanding of TypeScript. This project has a few dependencies. First of all is Netlify Dev, which is a package that runs Netlify functions locally. It mimics the environment that our Netlify functions are going to run on the server. We need to have it globally on our system so we can run it. We're going to have a Netlify Lambda, which is another package from Netlify that allows us to have a build step to our Netlify function. We're going to have TypeScript because we're going to use its compiler. We're going to have NodeFetch to use the window.fetch API into Node.js. We're going to have Bubble's environment preset that tells to Bubble which JavaScript syntax we want to output. We're going to have the TypeScript preset for Bubble to teach it how to use a TypeScript compiler. We're going to have the types for AWS Lambda because Netlify functions run, on, run AWS Lambdas under the hood. And we're going to have encoding as a dependency because it's used under the hood by NodeFetch, but it's not declared on the, uh, its package JSON. So if we don't add it, our pipeline is going to break on deploying on Netlify function. Quick workaround is to have it uh, declared as one of our dependencies. So enough of this, let's jump to the code. Before we get started with creating our Netlify TOML file, be mindful that in Netlify, once you create the Netlify TOML in the root of your project, it will override any definition that's already set on the dashboard. That being said, the TOML has a syntax built for simplicity. It's a straightforward file format with configuration in mind. So even if you're unfamiliar with it, the semantics is a bit self-explanatory. So the build declares what's going to happen in the build process. In here, we declare the command that's going to be run for our build. And when we're using Netlify Lambda, it's mandatory that we declare the functions, which is the directory that our code's going to be output. And because on Netlify, every function runs on slash dot Netlify slash functions slash the name of the file, we are going to add a rewrite that whenever our user hits our root, it's going to show whatever is going to be on that file. And on Netlify, rewrites share the same syntax as redirects, except that the rewrites is a special kind of redirect that returns a status 200. And that's about it. Our deployment is already configured. Now we need to populate our BabelRC file. So first of all, we are going to add the presets key and we're going to add the Babel preset for TypeScript. And then we're going to add the Babel environment preset. And in this case, we also need, need a special option which tells which is our target environment for that code. So Babel knows what to, how to configure it and we're setting it for Node.js. Now that this is done, we just need to go to our package.json file and declare our tasks. In the package JSON file on the scripts, because we declare what is the build function for our Lambda. So it's going to use the Netlify Lambda package and it's going to use the built-in task called build and it's going to run on our source folder. And for checking our types in the future, we're going to have a TS check file, which is going to take the TypeScript compiler, set a no emit flag so it doesn't output any code. We are going to define our library uh, to output code ES2015. And we're going to tell it to run on every TypeScript file inside our source folder. And that's pretty much it. Now that everything is set up, the only thing we need to do to have a Netlify function working is to export a handler function. That should be enough. So then we come down here and we say Netlify dev and it's going to run everything and set our Netlify Lambda function to run on localhost 8888. And here we go. It returns a message, hello Netlify functions. <gasps> it's being considered a plain text. That's because we're missing a header. So now with the content type header, it's, tell it's letting the browser know it's a JSON. And that's it. We have a Netlify function working now.
What we're going to do now is make use TypeScript. So first of all, we can use the AWS Lambda types. And this are actually the two parameters our handler receives. And now if we decide here to use, for example, we get all the query parameters as an object and we can, we know, for example, everything that our context has exposed for us as well. For our little API, we're not going to need this. What we do, we're going to need fetch and the route for our external API. And now we're going to start by creating the first fetch request to the external server. So our first request is going to return a list of monsters and this request is going to have and this this list is going to have a count and the re, and the results which is going to be at this point an array of any all most used APIs have already types declared and definitely typed so you could install as a json package and set it like this and now in our list And if by any chance the, our third party API doesn't return what we expect, we check if list count doesn't exist. And if it doesn't exist, I'm gonna say, okay, so we have no monsters. Otherwise, I want to return a random monster. So by doing this, I'm saying that, okay, give me a random number between zero and the count, which is the length of the array. And now, supposing we already have which monster we want, which is going to be only the ID and the route of this monster, we need now to do an additional request to get the data from this monster. And then the monster data is going to receive a new URL, which is a string. And then we're going to first try. And we're going to go to our API again and append the endpoint for that specific monster and parse the JSON that's coming back from it. If the JSON fails to parse, catch that error and we're going to throw our own error with our user-friendly message. And now that's it, our helper functions are already created. We just need to use them. We're going to add a try-catch block. And the try-catch block is going to return, a, we're going to get a random monster and then it's going to get the data from that monster. And to increase our type safety, we're going to type this. And then now in this case, we can define that here, it's going to be a list of monsters. And you're going to see that TypeScript is already about to infer all the props that we can use. So we're going to use URL and fetch the monster data. Now we're going to grab our monster data and add to our response. So instead of returning this message, we're just going to return the data. And now, in the case that our requests fail and throw the errors, we're going to catch this here, and we're going to receive that error, and we're going to return status code 500. So now, here you go, we got, we got an ancient brass dragon, now we got a werewolf. So our little API is ready. Now what we can do is first, if you set up the integration with, with GitHub, you can just continuous deployment and then every time you push to master, it's going to get deployed. Otherwise, you can use the Netlify package and just set it to deploy. Uh, if it's the first time, it's going to prompt you if you want to link to an existing project or if you want to create a new one because it's not my first time. It's going to do the deploy for me, sets you with a website draft, and then you can run it as production. Scoplic dash mas, which is monster as a service, .app, and that's it. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps me. If you want to stay tuned for more of my videos, hit the subscribe button. It's going to I'm going to appreciate that a lot. And see you next time. Bye.